Hey, what's going on? And welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. It's your girl, Nia Nicole. In today's topic, we're going to be talking about the nine questions that you haven't thought to ask, but you should be asking a trans person. Before we continue, I wanna give a huge thanks to Caitlin Burns, who I reached out after coming across this article, which I took inspiration to create this video. I will tag her blog right at the bottom of this video if you guys wanna check it out. But anyway, Caitlin, thank you so much for agreeing to collaborate with me because I took huge inspiration by this masterpiece of an article that you created. Anyway, without further ado, question number one. What does it mean to be trans? A trans person is someone who does not feel like they fit or identify with the sex or gender that they were assigned at birth. Most people are familiar with binary trans people. I'm one of those. When I was born, I did not conform with my male gender that I was assigned at birth and I transitioned to female. I was still fitting within the binary male and female system. What does it mean to be trans for some people that don't fit in the binary system? They are still considered trans people, but they are not the transgender that you may have heard of. If you're like me, you have been very familiar with the binary system and you don't know otherwise. I, for a very long time, did not accept transgender people that were not part of the binary system because I didn't understand. I didn't understand how some people do not identify themselves as being male or female, otherwise they are somewhere in between. Trans identities may seem new to some of you because it was not part of your culture. Through centuries and many, many, many years, there have been transgender people that are integral parts of certain communities. You may have heard me talk about it in the past, like the Fafafines or Lady Boys in Thailand or the Hijra in India. These are transgender identities that have been recognized by these cultures, which have been around for a very long time. It might seem new to you to hear about different definitions of what a trans person is because transgender is an umbrella that encompasses and accepts all people who are non-binary. There is not a lot of understanding of what these identities are that still fall under the transgender umbrella. There is a lot of mockery and as a human being, we should accept and respect everyone out there. What does it mean to be trans? It depends on the person. Question number two, why should I care about trans issues? What you might not understand is that for a very long time, some people were very anti-trans. There was laws banning trans people from living a normal life, changing their names or using restrooms. It was a tough time. Now we're talking here before Barack Obama. I mean, even Barack was one of those people that at first, at the beginning of his presidency, did not really accept trans marriage and all of that, which then he changed his tune. We're glad for that. While there's so many issues going on and laws protecting certain people like lesbians, gays, and bi's, some of these laws do not directly protect trans people. As you may or may not be aware, there is many states today in the United States that could evict a trans person the moment that they find out that they're trans just because they're trans. There's no laws protecting trans people. Some of the trans issues that are out there could affect you and that's why you should care about them. I'll give you a good example. There was a time when a certain president was in office and he wanted to pass laws where you could profile people based on whether they look feminine or non-feminine enough to use the restroom. These kind of laws, if they were to be put into effect, they could affect you. If you look a little masculine and you're a female, you could be arrested or questioned before you walked into a restroom. These issues and these laws that are currently being thought of being passed by politicians 
could affect you. I don't think that anyone would want to be profiled just for the simple fact that they look trans. I definitely keep my eye on that. Question number three, what about the pronoun thing? This one is a sticky one. For a very long time, I was one of those people where I couldn't really accept using different terms like they and them for certain people that considered themselves trans and they also wanted to be they them because for a long time, like I said, I have been part of the binary system. I agreed with it and I just didn't understand anything else. As you may be watching this video, you might not understand that they, them was used as a singular term back in the 1300s. The Oxford Dictionary has it in there. Like it's it's been a thing. It's not news that it is being reintroduced into society by certain trans people or non-binary people that want to use the term they. You might think, why do we have all these different terms and why do some people want to be he, her, they? And there's even other terms like they, she, and there's great examples of people that do not really identify as he, him, her, or even they. There's some people that feel like they're somewhere in between and they don't want to be considered they because the moment that they label themselves as they, Maybe a cisgendered person might say, well, since they want to be they, I could call them him or her, causing, you know, some issues there. Everyone has pronouns. You have a pronoun, I have a pronoun. Just because I want to get to be known as a certain pronoun and you want to be known as a certain pronoun, we should be respectful. I think the moment that you meet someone that wants to use a different pronoun, it's not an opportunity for you to prove a point, but instead to be a better person and be respectful. If that person wants to be referred to as whatever it is, they, for example, then refer to them as they. Question number four, what issues are trans people fighting for? A lot of the policy changes that are happening year after year and day after day, there's so many laws that have been passed that protect transgender people in a way, but these laws are not federal. These laws do not affect every single trans person across the United States. There's also a lot of laws, or let's just mention one for example, like being able to get married. This law could universally like fit into everybody, right? Because if you're trans, gay, straight, bi, lesbian, you're up in the bundle. But there's some laws that are still needed to protect transgender people. As I said before, for example, housing. Some states, you could evict a trans person and it's awful. This should not be something that someone should have to worry about. Also, there's a high probability of trans people being discriminated against at the workplace because sometimes the laws aren't being followed or maybe there's no law to protect. Currently, there's a lot of these issues and laws that affect trans people and just as for example, people of color that one day were fighting for certain rights or women were fighting for certain rights. Trans people have these kind of rights as well. And these are the kind of rights that we're currently fighting for. Be able to change our name, use restrooms, or not be discriminated for our living, housing situation, or even being part of the workforce. Question number five, why are we always talking about trans issues? If you're like me, you might think that every time you turn on the TV, you're seeing, ooh, trans person, beats women, Olympics, whatever. It seems like we're hearing a lot about all these trans people crossing over to the cisgender world and now there's all these issues being created. Like, should we allow a trans person that identifies as female, that was born biologically male, be allowed to be part of the female sport in like such a high competitive place like the Olympics or even someone in high school. It seems like we're talking about all of these issues more now than ever because there's more people out there that are living their true self. I feel that because a lot of people are finally living their true self and fighting for their rights, you're able to have more and more protections and be able to get your voice heard. That's why you're hearing about all these issues because for a very long time, trans people have been oppressed and have been hurt 
and have been shoved in such deep corners of earth that we weren't allowed to speak up. I feel that a lot of these issues are being raised now that there's younger people that are coming up and coming out as trans and there's more people that are talking about these issues and that is important. Question number six, what is the deal with the bathrooms? I don't know about you, but when I go to the bathroom, I go in there, do my business and get out. I am not a pervert. I'm not using the female restroom because I'm gonna go peep or do something weird or nasty. I believe that most of us go into a public bathroom, for example, to just do our business and get out. I believe that there's a lot of brainwashing going on that because someone that's trans is allowed to use the women's restroom, for example, that there's gonna be perverts that are gonna take that opportunity to say they're trans to be able to commit a crime. Somebody who's gonna commit that kind of crime is not gonna give a shit about identifying as trans and they're just gonna go out there and commit the crime. There is such an unfounded myth just that trans people are seeking attention wanting to be pervy in women's spaces. All this fear has led a lot of people to pass laws or vote on laws that don't allow trans people to be able to just use the restroom. It's very ridiculous. Question number seven, women with penises. What is the panic? This one here is very sticky. What I can say about this is that I feel that traditionally we believe that men have penises and females have vaginas and that is it and that's where it stops because i'm trans and because i support the trans community and because i support transgender individuals i will have to say that it's all up to a personal choice in the respect that we have towards someone and i think that we need to stop trying to identify what a woman and what a man is based on a penis or a vagina i think we definitely need to stay out of each other's businesses on this one Question number eight, what's the deal with letting trans people be part of women's sports? Oh, this one, I am torn. Fuck, you, you're all gonna come for me, I know. But if you're born male and you grow up and you go through puberty as a male, I don't think that it's fair to transition at later in life and then go and join an Olympic sport and then be a little girl who's been training since she was 10, 11, and then later on in her life compete against this trans person, I think there's an unfair advantage. Personally, for me, that's what I think. I wanna know in the comments, let me know if you think that we should let trans people be part of whatever gender they identify as, and what should be the rules that we apply to defining what males and females are in the sport. Like, should you have a vagina if you're in the female sport? Or should you have hormone levels only? And it doesn't matter whether you have a penis or a vagina. Like, where do we draw the line on that? That, I wanna start the comments up, let me know. Just come back to me with this one. Final question, question number nine. What about trans kids? I mean, I'm fine with adults, but what about trans kids? For me, when I grew up, I grew up non-conforming to my male genitalia, to my male gender role, and all of this. So as a young child, I knew that something was different. I knew that I did not want to be male. I knew that I wanted to grow up to be a woman and a female, and I wanted to be a bride. and and all this stuff, right? And I knew this from a, such a young age. When you grew up, you knew you were male or female, you felt that you were boy, girl, and you liked what you liked. There was no way that someone could teach you to be more feminine or more masculine, and then you would end up that way. You know, I feel like you just are. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that a child should have the ability to know what they wanna be? I personally believe that we should treat children as children and let them grow up to choose what they want to be and do. I probably disagree on giving certain drugs to certain kids at certain ages and all this stuff. I'm not a big advocate of everyone should be on hormones type of thing because I think that you could still transition without hormones and you guys should watch my other videos. I get deep in how I don't really take hormones and I look like this. That may not be the case for other people. The thing with kids, 
I think that a lot of people have started a narrative that kids are too young to know when they're trans. I don't agree with that. Let me know in the comments. This concludes my video. I've already gone through the nine questions. I know that it was a lengthy video, but listen, let me know in the comments which one of these questions you agree or disagree with and why. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.